January 14, 2020. These are some of the toys of the boys, father and uh, sons, Metin and Yahya. Metin is reading Mickey Mouse, Yahya is reading Oliver Twist, and the father is reading the language of argument. Anyway, these are some of the toys we are raised with. I just want to show you and um, I shared it on Twitter when I saw a lady who is a British Turkish uh, well she lives in Turkey eh? she's an actress when she shared her toys I will show you a moment later therefore it led me to share this on Twitter these are the boys I said who said boys are no different than girls okay if you are curious and this is my ring which I use it as a uh, what as a signature that <laughs> Okay, now let me share you some ideas about how to raise children. Well, uh, though I am expert in raising boys, but uh, there is a lot of commonality between raising boys and girls, and I will share you with some books. Hi, I would like to share you a few ideas, not well organized, but semi-randomly which these books are also picked semi-randomly uh, to give you an idea about how introduce your kids how tickle their brains and their hearts um, most importantly you have to give love and compassion and care and attention to your kids that's number one be positive be nurturing uh, don't be too critical of their failures. If they fail, be optimistic. Always give a sense of optimism. Praise their accomplishments. Exaggerate their accomplishments. If they get A's and B's and one F, then don't focus on the F, focus on the A. Say, you will be able to make this F to A. I trust you, I know. If you need help, I am here. If I cannot help you, I find someone else. Kids need encouragement, but don't be a helicopter parent on them. Let them be able to fail. If you are helping them, slowly you need to shh, what could fade out and let them take ownership of their homeworks or their whatever chores they have. Too many issues that I could, I, I, I wish I had a list of the things, but, and then second, trigger their intellectual capacity and potentials. Children are born as philosophers. They ask, they are curious about the world, about everything that you think it is dull, but for them is a new, interesting things. If they see a hole, they want to investigate, put, put something inside that hole. It could be dangerous. Well, if, when it is very risky, dangerous, then you can interfere. You can stop them. But other ways, let them learn. Even if they mess things up. Otherwise, they will not learn. And let them ask questions, no taboos. Any questions. Don't impose on them. Don't indoctrinate them with your religion, with things that you memorize, that you are indoctrinated with. Especially religion. Because you didn't really philosophically question in detail. You didn't demand extraordinary evidence for those extraordinary, mostly false and contradictory claims to put in your brain. You just memorize them. And you don't want to turn your kid to a parrot like yourself, correct? To a, <coughs> to a monkey like yourself. Therefore, 
<laughs> well, I am not. I, I question my parents. I rejected the religions of my parents. I rejected, I am politically and religiously very contrarian. Those who follow me on Twitter or follow my books <coughs> or talk, they know. <coughs> so far I caught cold. I was in New Jersey at my sister's home this break after the semester. Anyway, now I would like to also, um, when they are in elementary school, dinner table, ask them, what did you learn today? Share with me. It should be a ritual, and they should be excited to share with you something they learn. Therefore, next time when they go to school, they will be not only attentive for themselves, to, all, to also tell you as parents, I hope that you are still together, what they learned. And therefore, they will be more attentive, more excited, and then when they come, they share what they learn, show excitement. And while they are also telling you, they will become teacher from students, they turn to teachers. And they will be also repeating, very important, within 24 hours to remember to go over, browse what you learned morning or few hours before. Therefore, it will put in their longer memory. And they will also learn how to communicate. Dinner table is important, but again, use that time to engage them in intellectual, philosophical, scientific conservation. Lightweight. Make it enjoyable. If you see they get bored, stay. You need to create excitement, make it interesting for children. Again, no taboos. Just give you one example. Um, you know, this is, uh, where is it here? This was, uh, in fact, in this book, uh, this is 10 questions for atheists. I have 19 questions for Christians. Well, it is time to also talk about adults. You're the books, you should read this one. The cover may change. I don't like this cover. This was provisional. Um, here it is. This is, you can, this would be a start for you guys if you are a Christ, Christian. Uh, do you see it? Can you read it? Okay. Um, anyway, uh, the, my son, when he was, all how many years old? My gosh, he was about t oh, three and a half years old. Uh, I, in the, here I have it, in fact. In the beginning, I start this chapter from here. Uh, yep. Uh, beautiful. Um, it is uh, this question. He wanted to join us for prayer, me and mom. His mom, Yahya's mom, is a Persian-American. Uh, we pray together on the carpet at homes, in our homes we take our shoes off all the time, in fact. And um, I saw my son was getting ready to go out play with his friends, neighbor kids. He was three and a half years old. And uh, while he was getting ready, putting his shoes on, me and my wife, we decided to do the prayer. It was daytime, perhaps noon prayer. And then I noticed just before we started, my son came, joined us, but with shoes on. He didn't take his shoes off. It was really close to the door. It was living room. Uh, I didn't say anything. My wife told him to take his shoes off. Said, Yahya, take your shoes off. He asked, why question? Which is the best question in the world. You should encourage your children to ask this question. What, how, where, when, but most importantly, why? Why question is the key for knowledge, 
for understanding, for philosophy. Love of wisdom start with the word why. Why is the engine that will lead you to light, quality life, and happiness? He asked the why question. <coughs> Mother said, because God says so. And I'm watching that curiously, watching my son. What he will say, whether he will accept like a sheep or he will question. He says, well, I didn't hear God says so. This is a little boy, three and a half year old philosopher. I didn't hear God says so, mom. And the mother got upset, didn't have follow back, <laughs> didn't have anything to say. Though mother is much better than uh, majority, great majority of religions, she has her own reasons, but at that time, uh, mother's um, uh, way is more, much more emotional and stuff, her dealing with son. And then I said, Yahya, keep your shoes on while praying, join us for praying. Well, it is, for him is a game, just <coughs> doing some exercise. I said, keep your shoes on until you hear God for yourself yourself <laughs> if God tells you take your shoes off anyway that's the way raising kids and the other kid for example Metin I want to tell you an, a story um, this one uh, economist he graduated from Princeton he's working right now for Apple and uh, Yahya graduated from business and law school and also did his international master in law in China, Tsinghua University, top university there. And uh, both of them are doing well, thank God, personally, emotionally. Their mother recently visited them in San Francisco. They treated him, her the best. Anyway, I know my English is getting even worse because recently I keep talking in Turkish. Um, now, this little one, while he was in elementary school, I was going to show you some books, correct? Fast. Um, when he was in elementary school, uh, how many years ago, goodness sake, in uh, uh, two, what, 15 years, some 15 years ago, so many years passed. When he was in elementary school, um, or maybe first year in middle school, he asked me cellular phone. Cellular phones were pretty new. In fact, I have a journal for it. The exact day is written there. It should be at 19.org. And also, I publish it in my Turkish life story, uh, autobiography, Norshinden, Arizona, right now it is getting ready for English version, which I started before the Turkish version, but anyway. Um, he said, Daddy, I want cellular phone. That time cellular phones were not very, just new. Um, and it's expensive. And the time was limited. The number of texting was limited. Therefore, they were charged more if you went beyond the limit allowed by contract. And uh, of course, in my mind, when I saw elementary school, fifth year or middle school kids having cellular phones in their hands, some of them had it, few of them that time, um, I was very... <laughs> critical of them, I say, here are spoiled American kids. You don't need these cellular phones. They're expensive. Many kids in the world, they do not have even shoes, proper shoes or food. Uh, I was very critical of that. And therefore, when here it is, my son, in living room over there, in the same house, <coughs> <coughs> afternoon, I don't know whether it was Saturday, perhaps it was Saturday, 
he asked me for a cell phone and um, I didn't express him my disapproval I didn't tell him you are a spoiled Kurdish Persian American kid in my home because I raised my kids telling them our language of conversation debate discussion our language of fight is logic reasoning we need to convince each other not by yelling not by crying not by screaming or doing violence it is the language that God has given to us logic we are born with 19 rules of inference, like modus ponens, like modus tollens, like hypothetical syllogism, which I have been teaching for 20 years. Logic and symbolic logic is beautiful. Now, therefore, I raised with them. I said, okay, my son, Metin, I said, grab a pen and paper. I give you 10 minutes. Give me three good reasons or good reasons I don't remember exactly whether I said three good reasons or give me some good reasons not enumerating doesn't make sense really give me good reasons convince me and if you convince me that really you need it and I should get you a seller phone I will okay basically I shifted the burden on him and I was almost sure that he will not win. In my mind, he didn't need it. It was not, it didn't, uh, it didn't, um, it was not a necessity. And uh, we have limited budget. Well, 10 minutes later, he came with some arguments. I still remember two arguments out of three. He came up with three arguments. But the two was more than enough. I was... I decided, says, okay, you won. We are going right now to get you a cellular phone. And the same hour, I took him to nearby shop, and I got him a cellular phone and added him to our service. What was here, his reasoning? One was, well, Daddy, when you come to the school, it has big campus after the time, because I was teaching there too. But I was teaching also at the college. At the same day, I teach at my children's school. And afternoon, I go to college and come back, pick him up. It was <laughs> sometimes I would have students seven years old to 70 years old. I remember, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not 100%. I can even have the list of those students, um, the college students. I have all the lists. And um, I had people older than me. And of course, people younger than even my kids, seven years old. Um, and every age group, I was teaching elementary, middle school, high school, and college. Um, then uh, one was, Daddy, you come to campus to pick me up. You don't know where I am after the class. I could be playing tennis. He loved playing tennis, and he had been in China several times. And uh, all uh, frisbee. I could be playing frisbee, or I, I might be in library or computer lab, or working on science projects. He got many first places in Arizona in Science Olympiad. Anyway, and you don't know where I am, and you look for me, you wait for me, you spend time. <laughs> Sometimes you get upset with me, why I am late. Therefore, it will eliminate this problem. You will just call me even on your way, get ready at this point, and you will pick me up. One. And second, he preemptively stroke. Stroke is a stroke, uh, the past tense. Uh, one of my concerns, that's important. If you are making an argument, not only you have to make position, uh, make good points in favor of your position, whatever you have, you need to also address some important potential objections in advance. It's called preemptively. If you make a good argument, in that argument you need to anticipate your opposition and their major top 
counter arguments, not lower ones, secondary ones, which is called uh, punching straw man argument. Straw man argument is called. <coughs> Therefore, he said, Daddy, I know that it will cost, and I know that you may worry about I may go over the limits of my uh, allocated data or texting. Therefore, uh, you might worry, but you, you can trust me because I am a good, responsible student. Exactly. He was a good, responsible student. And um, he was A plus student, therefore, doing his homework without me worrying. Never I told him, do your homework or anything. He was on his test. Therefore, I said, well, there is no worry. He needs it. And got him sent for Anyway, um, here I would like to share with you some of the books uh, I put here. They are semi-randomly picked from my library. Uh, I enjoy them too, but I also share them with my kids. Will's Best Puzzle, not necessarily this very book, but similar books with picture, with puzzles. They are really very, this book is a good one. Variety of puzzles, not the same kind over, over, not very kind of stupid um, workplace. Yeah, it is okay once a while, but this is one of the best books. And this is another one, uh, I think. Uh, to give you an idea, you may not be able to read. Uh, you see, I'm obsessive compulsive a bit. Uh, the Joy of Mathematics. This is also a good book. This may be after they are in middle school. Uh, some of these puzzles in elementary and middle school. And, well, this is a good book. Uh, I have papers inside. Um, Every two pages has a topic. And uh, Disorder in Court, this is beautiful jokes, one of the best legal jokes. It is very high quality. This is a real life, mostly in courtrooms, funny, well categorized book. But in the US to checkmate, uh, this is basically you teach them chess and play with them. And um, don't indulge in chess so much because uh, it, is, it should be healthy dose of chess or games. Especially chess, be careful. Um, but a very exceptional chess player, that time if he has chance to become a chess world champion, then you may help him out. But other than that, it could be uh, have side effects. Um, how to win every argument? Of course, this is um, this is a little bit uh, uh, maybe in uh, middle school last year, middle school. But the book was. But you need to find a simple uh, one about logical fallacies and uh, engage them in recognizing logical fallacy in very early age. It will be nice in elementary school, but surely in middle school. Um, a book something like this will introduce them to gadgets and many things, recognitions. You see this one is, uh, let them go through one by one, attention, you can go together with your child about, you know, there are many, many categories of appliances, tools, things all over. So, uh, some of them old, this is a, now became an old book, 
and uh, but the names of the things is important to recognize uh, their mechanism, how it works. Okay, this is called Macmillan Visual Dictionary. Uh, you should get as a gift to your kids, especially when they are in middle school. And um, this one will help them to enjoy. Enjoyment is the most important thing. In early age, never, never, in fact, no time, you should not force them, make them unhappy about learning something. Learning should be always associated with joy, with fun. It's something good. And they will learn, they will, with time, they will, just for the sake of knowing something, they will pursue knowledge to increase their knowledge, wisdom. They will enjoy it. And they don't associate it with food and candy. Don't say, if you do it, I will give you, if you solve this problem, I will give you candy. Never, never. Let them, by itself, solution, learning by itself should be the gift, the bonus, the reward. Don't have external rewards. If you do it, you are hurting. You are not serving. <coughs> this is a book in elementary school and uh, with this book you can again go through initially one by one slowly teach them to go be able to not only look at the pictures and also learn and savor it and you may say every day about two pages that's it let's go through it and uh, then let them go on their own. A few others, for example, this one is a good one because a summary of the things. This is about 20th century. Uh, every year is here. Beautiful. And uh, 20th century, year by year. Of course, now we are, we took 20 years in 21st century. Can't believe it. <coughs> Eureka, this is also a good book. I have uh, purchased many of these copies and I have given as gift to some of my students. Some of these books I have given away, students or the toys. When I get it, I give it. And this one is a book has these topics. Uh, but it, it really very intensively uh, um, in a briefly explains each uh, terminology and uh, in several pages and then goes to another one uh, like this. Okay, this is a good one. Introduction to various sciences. Logic puzzles, um, this is good. There are a variety of them. Uh, whodunits, detective work, beautiful, with short story and uh, pictures. And then, of course, inside there are some clues uh, leads them to read carefully, use their reasoning, inferences, and problem solving. Uh, this is another one, power puzzles. You see how delicious this book is. Okay, and then the science book, this is another science book. This is from years, major events or discoveries in scientific world and individuals. I don't know how the camera sees it right now on the side. I know this is very primitive way of 
demonstrating a book. I love it. And puzzle grams. Two of them I have. This is another beautiful puzzles. Very important to introduce your kids to this kind of puzzles in early age. And uh, this is another more puzzle grams. Delicious. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. With these books, I am like in heaven. And also board games. More board games. These are, you see. What is this? These are the board games. This is the index. And it goes like this. Anyway. That's it. There are a lot to talk about pedagogy raising kids. They should not be memorizing. They should be asking questions, learning even mathematics instead of memor memorizing the formulas. They should be curious about where this complicated formula come. And then if they go back, they will find out it starts from small, 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 incrementally. It becomes complex. But if they see the steps one by one and comprehend each of them, they will understand. Like quadratic formula, they should, okay, first time they encounter, they may memorize, but they should know how it is derived. And uh, the same also geometry, instead of memorization, they should understand and try to prove it. Why an angle, uh, interior angles equals 180, they should be able to prove it for themselves. And uh, if you raise your kids with love and uh, encouraging their philosopher in them, questioning, don't indoctrinate them, uh, reward them, praise them for their uh, accomplishment, even exaggerate their accomplishment. L and be a moral person, lead them being a moral, honest human being. Don't uh, beat them, don't yell and scream, don't use your muscles, God-given things that, but it's not match, it's not just to use against kids. I will punish you if you don't do this. No, no, instead, reason with them they will really appreciate and I will understand. Don't underestimate them. And um, hopefully uh, their environment will be also good. And also at school, try to know about their friends, about their teachers, at least once a week go there, even ask permission to join some of the classes in, in audience, which I did. Um, and if you see some friends, good friends who are in many ways they are uh, accomplished, they are positive, they are studying and they are curious and they have good manners, meet their parents and try to organize some parties together so that through your being parents coming together your kid will be matched, become a friend with that one, or nurture their friendships. By this way, you are socially engineering without your kid even realizing. Don't say, don't be friend with this one, be friend. No, 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 that doesn't work. But behind the scene, you, if you see some friends negative, try to separate them in ways, be creative about that, and some good friends, try to create, establish relationship between your kid and those good friends. Because at, at, there will be a time, especially in middle school, your kid's friends will be more influential on your kids than you. But until then, if you do your work, you don't need to worry. Peace.